Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 218 of Korean Podcast. Our today's guest is Mr. Leo Abaro. He's an art director and concept artist at One Pixel Brush from Bekasi, Indonesia. And of course, before we go into the signature questions of the podcast, let me quickly mention that in the four contact section of the captions, which is at, at the beginning of the captions, you can find the ID to his Instagram account, the links to his art session and Twitter profile, and also the link to his link tree, which you can from there get access to all his other socials and you know other links. And with that being said, how are we doing today? Great. Great. How are you? Thanks for having me. Uh, my pleasure. By the way, has it getting, is it starting to get really hot in Indonesia, by the way? It must be really hot right now. Funnily enough, it's not really hot. It's actually the other way around. It's really, really cold. You know, I, I know, I know wow. people who, who live in Europe as, as, you know, are going to laugh, but like 20, 21 is really cold. Like, it's insane. I kept having flu. Wow. Yeah, so it's been, yeah because it keeps, it's, it's, I think it's still the monsoon season, so it keeps raining all the time. I know that in the Philippines it's really hot, but here it's cold. All right, good, good. So yeah. for a while you can still enjoy the weather until it gets... Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, if, you, if, you, if you've played that trending before, like that's, that's basically how it is here in the past two weeks. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. All right. And all right. Uh, let's go with the signature question of the podcast, which is the first question, which is let's do it. Give, give us a little introduction on how we got into the world of visual arts and design. Basically, tell mm-hmm. us your origin story of you know what led you to decide to become an artist. Okay. So basically, uh, me and my parents were watching theater and we walk into an alley and some robber shot us and then I become a superhero. No, I'm kidding. That's Batman. <laughs> basically, I started, I, I don't know, I started basically like every artist, I think. And I like to, I really like to draw as a kid. Like I draw everywhere on the walls, you know, I see a surface and I have a pencil, I'll draw on top of that. But yeah, so that ever since I was a child, I, w- I wanted to become an artist. Like, I I know that I, what I want to do, even though I don't have a concept of an artist yet, or you know, a concept of making a living with this. But all I know is I just want to draw forever, right? That's basically how. But I think I'm I got seriously into making art again around 2013 when I got into. When I get into university, so I have to choose a school. And then I was like, okay, I have to choose some subject that I really am, you know, interested in. And I'm not a bright kid. I don't know if you notice. So I I don't have many, many choices. Like my dad wants me to be an engineer, right? Relatives wants to wants me to be a doctor, but you know, we all know I don't have the brains for that. So I choose art so I, I i got into an art school basically and i and basically i just started kind of from not really from zero because i already knew how to draw but i started to reignite my spark there right the spark that i have because before that i was I, w- I wasn't doing art much you know i was making music i was in a band you know it's basically young people stuff but it really reignited my stuff and then i think around that year when i got into art school around a year later i found this channel by fengzu you know fengzu right yeah design design cinema and then yeah that opens a whole can of worm in my head like okay so this is this is like a job to do this like i thought when i got into art school even i thought that the way that you can make a living with art is either you become a fine artist you sell sell paintings or you do commissions of people of portraits right or you can be an art teacher or you can you know make advertisements like this is the graphic design right i don't know that concept art was a thing so yeah that that really really shines you know a light upon that path for me like okay i guess so this thing's this is a thing so then I think after that, I I begged my mom to buy me a Wacom, like the 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 silver Wacom, you know, Wacom pens, and yes. Yeah, so so if, if, ever since then, I think I've been just drawing and everything. And up until I was doing Fiverr commissions. I don't know if you know Fiverr, like doing those those jobs and 
trading art for wikihow.com. So everything just, you know, I was in school, so I needed money, right? And then I think around 2018, you know, after practicing for so long, neglecting, basically, I, I neglect school, right? I don't care about school. No, I don't care about how good I am doing in aca- academically, right? My All my scores are insanely low. I don't care because I just want to practice, right? I just want to practice drawing because in, in, in that school, it's an art school. So they don't really teach you how to make something, you know? They, but they teach, teach you more, most, most of it is the uh, the things that are more a conceptual theoretical side of things i should say like they they teach you art psychology they teach you art history they teach you how to you know quote unquote put yourself into your art but they don't teach you technical stuff that's well that's what i i felt like i needed right in the back so i i really neglected that and just i know that i want to do this so I know from from the from the get go that if I'm focusing too much on school, then if my goal is to be a concept artist, then I'm I won't get anywhere. So I made the choice to neglect school and just practice. And then I think 2018, even before I graduated, I get a job. So then I just applied that job on one day. I, I saw an, 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 a job opening like in a, in a local studio. It's it's a pretty big local studio. It's called Polar Engine. I saw a job opening and I was like, okay, maybe I should apply, but it's nothing to lose, right? I, I won't get in anyway. And, you know, I, I haven't even graduated yet. But then two weeks later, I, I got a message that I, you know, I got accepted to that job. Right? And I was three months away from graduating. So then they they were kind enough to give me time to finish school and, and began working for them and then two years of working there and i got into one pixel brush and you know i think a year and a half later i i took the role of art director and here i am basically all right and i guess you know not paying attention to school i kind of actually you know worked out for you you know in that case you know right yeah yeah because I, I don't see the point. Like, my goal is not to be an acad- academic or anything. So, and why I go into school is also because I, I have a deal with my dad. Like, I, so he gave me, he gave me two options, right? So if you want to work right away, then you've got to get out of this house. You know, you got to, you got to get to make a living and I won't give you money. Right. But if you want to go to school, I'll pay for it. But you have to finish it, right? I was like, "Oh shit, I, I'm I'm just a high schooler. I don't have any skill. I better go to school." So I basically go to school to pause that adult life, you know. So it's not really like I mentioned in the beginning. Like I I'm I don't care what subject I got in, like what 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 major I get in. Like I'm as long as it's school, then I I get to postpone that and to do whatever I want. Oh yeah, I know what you mean. And yeah. um well at that point, you know, like here's the thing. Now now I'm kinda curious. Um mm-hmm. were you originally studying art and design where you were in high school and were going to college or from the start, you know, you just knew you wanted to go to a major that's related to art. I think you kinda briefly touched upon that when you mm-hmm. were answering, but how did that thing actually work out for you, you know? Like when like what type of, you know, major or you know Thing you went in college for? Oh, uh, in what do you mean? Can you read? Like I mean, like you know, when you're in high school, usually that's around the age that you know everyone has to you know decide you know what they're going to study for their future oh, yeah, and yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. But when it comes to art, most of us you know have didn't actually initially choose art because it's mm-hmm. not a safe choice. We yeah, have to yeah. choose something else, then do art. Okay. Side, okay. You know? Okay. Okay. Funny enough, I actually don't want to go art, like you said, like to visual art. I wanted to actually go to a music school. All right, because that's what I really liked to do. And then my second choice was an engineering school. I don't know why I choose that because, you know, we all know if I get into that school, then I won't finish it, like, for sure. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's insane, but yeah, art, art is not not the first choice because for for me not because it's unsafe because my first choice was 
you know, people would say equally unsafe. It's music school, but because I don't know, like my young self, I don't really think about the prospects in the future. I guess I just, I'm just, you know, I like this, so I want to do this. I don't care. Like I even even now to an extent, I still think that way. Like uh, I quit my first job at Polar Engine because I feel like I don't love painting anymore, right? So then even 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 before the contract ends, I like okay, I I don't think I'd like to do this anymore. I should I should tell my employers because if I don't like to do this anymore, anyways, then the the work I output is gonna be bad. And then everybody's gonna be, you know, it's it's not good for everybody. So I just okay, I, I I guess I need to quit, and that's even before I get another job. So that that's just my personality, I guess. It's 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 sometimes a problem. A lot of times a problem. All right, mm-hmm. and um, I mean, of course, in the introduction, I briefly mentioned, and you know, touched upon that the fact that you're an art director and a concept artist. But mm-hmm. what I want to ask right now is, like, you know, if you wanted to like you know describe what is your main branch of design mm-hmm. uh, what would it be and also tell us about your experience you know from the sort of you working as that position you know till now okay uh by branch you mean can you can you elaborate more about that like a specific uh, like what certain discipline of art are you do you describe yourself as a major specialist ah, more than anything okay. else? Okay, okay. Yeah, so I think I'm a more of a special specialist of because I came from an a painted illustration background in my first job. So I specialize specialize really in storyboards and keyframes. That's what I really specialize in. And environment, but <laughs> more on the again on the keyframe side not really on the design side although i got into a lot of designing nowadays so and you know we do a lot of design jobs at work too so you learn that way too but if i'm if i'm asked like if 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 you put a gun on my head and ask me that that would be my answer and to answer that second question i think one of the one of the most the experience that I got that's, I think, most eye-opening is, you know, getting the job the first two months, I still think about it as an art job, like art directing. Like, of course, it's an art job, right? Because it's in the title and you manage artists. But as I do the job, like, the more time I got, the more experience I got, the more I realized that it's more of a managerial job more than anything else, right? You have to be really good at dealing with people and managing people, which I'm still trying to be, you know, better at more than artistically, because everybody can have an artistic vision, right? Everybody, I think everybody to an extent can direct, but not everybody can wrangle a lot of people to, you know, to reach that same vision. You know what I mean? Like, it's easy to see, but it's it's not it's not easy to make people to do what's needed for the, for the better of a project. And sometimes there's, you have to make decisions too. Like decisions are easy to make, it seems like, but it's hard to make decisions when it comes to artistic stuff, especially because you saw so many options, right? So that it's about, it's about a more of a managerial job. And I would say it's, it's fulfilling to me weirdly like I, I i never thought i would say this like a job other than drawing is fulfilling but i think art directing is fulfilling in a weird way because sometimes if you work with a junior artist like you can you can actually help them grow right so that's i and i really like teaching anyway so that's kind of fulfilling to me but most of all I think it's a manager job more than art job. I believe so. Mm -hmm. All right. By the way, I just remembered something. Um, Your Instagram account previously got hacked or you got lost access to it. Am I right? Yeah. Somehow, somehow Facebook banned it. I think because I posted an MMA fight screenshot, (laughs) Like it's pretty violent to be honest. So I think that's why it got banned. That's weird because I've seen so much weirder shit on this app. Like, you know, that I know, right? I know, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I saw a guy got bit by a snake, and you know the account is still up. I I don't I don't get you, Facebook. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> like it's weird because because literally I was just thinking like you know in my head like something clicks right now that wait Leo Aguero like that Leo Aguero that's really familiar. I think uh, oh yes. And, and you probably don't remember at all, you know, because you get a lot mm. of messages. But, um, mm. like, I think about two years ago, I messaged you on your other profile with my other uh-huh. prof- my podcast, like, page profile. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, yeah, you were busy. You said, hey, let's actually hang out. You can message me later, you know, and we can reschedule. And then what uh-huh. happened was, you know, then your page was gone. Yeah, then- yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it happened around that around time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think I would. Well. I would still. I think I still have the email too. No, I mess. I didn't email you back then. I just did, messaged did you. I? On the okay. End. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's weird, man. It's weird. <laughs> like even my Facebook was banned because of that because it's connected. All right. That's weird. It's weird. Yeah. Wow. And and they they gave you they gave you no way to appeal. Like it's like okay, you're gone. It's it's weird. And I imagine if that's me, right? But I I I was just imagining what if people what if it's it happens to a person who lives off this? Like it's gonna be insane. Yeah, I mean one way to actually get good customer service from them that I found out in the past couple of years is that if you have a serious problem, you know, with accounts or something, you have to pay, you have to make a Facebook account and make a business page. Then mm-hmm. when you do that, you can pay for a feature for live customer support. So if you pay, oh, they have okay. to give you offer real customer support. And usually they I really look at, look at your problems a lot. Like um, I see. Yeah, it's, in 2020, I used to have this problem. Like I remember once in the start of 2020, there were so many bad news and everything. It was really affecting my mental health. So I deactivated my account. But uh-huh. when I wanted to, after two, like about two months, you know, reactivate it, it says that your profile you is like... It didn't say, but I researched and I realized that my profile is banned. Okay. And I like I was so stubborn and determined to, you know, get it back because I had so many connections and messages there. And I was like, oh mm-hmm. god damn it. So I actually did a lot of like emails, you know, I paid for the customer service and everything. And finally they said, Oh, sorry, this was banned by accident after like <laughs> like you know, weeks of like messaging and emailing that wow. address. What a dumb reason. Address. And do you know what the reason was that I actually got banned? Mm-hmm. I think a year before that, I posted like a video of time lapse of an artwork, and there was a copyright music on it, and I didn't oh, know that at the time so that was a thing. And it even gave me a warning before posting it that hey, this is copyrighted, and it even deleted the post. And do you know how I <clears throat> noticed that? Because as soon as I managed to reactivate my account, like five minutes later, a message came that at this date you use copyrighted music, you need to remove it. And I was like. There's no post to remove. Like, there's a bug in the system, you know? Yeah, that's insane. And, yeah. And, yeah, so basically the, the key thing to take away from this is always try to have some sort of backup plan when it comes to social media. Like, you know, uh-huh. contingency plans, basically, you know, and always, yeah. if it's possible, pay for the paid subscriptions or anything. If there mm. are even, on, even Twitter has paid subscriptions, which is super yeah. weird. Like, that's another can of worms, so let's not get into it. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, if I you're... Mean, uh, Nowadays, if you're an artist, I don't see how you cannot have a social media account unless you're like Jamie Jones or you know something similar. But Dylan Cole, right? But you you need it nowadays. Yeah, I mean, I genuinely yeah. say, I genuinely mean this when I say this. I hate having social media. Like the only reason <laughs> I have this, like I'm like I'm serious. I want to go back to those Nokia old Nokia phones, like Sony Ericsson phones. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. Like just the people in my circle have my number. They can text me on WhatsApp or something. But I genuinely don't like social media. You know, like I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. I'm not one of those guy guys who are trying to say, oh, the technology bad and everything. You know, stuff like that. No, I like YouTube. I like you know a lot of things. But personally, I mm. really don't like social media that much. Yeah, and I just have it because of the podcast. And <laughs> you know, my I know as an artist, I, I need to promote myself on Twitter. You mm-hmm. need to always constantly be on the hustle and grind and all that fun uh-huh. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. Uh, people on social media can be can have amplified personalities and can be really weird. And when you see people in real life, they're like, "Hey, how's it going?" That it's normal, right? It's, it's just weird in social media. Yeah, 
Like, I think it's that thing, you know, when someone's really, their personality is something on text, but when you see them in person, they're like, what? Yeah, there's is a lot of a... new ones missing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. All right. So, <laughs> let's actually, there's something really important I wanted to actually ask you and, you know, oh, talk yeah, about with you, which is, um, how does your design process usually go anytime you want, you want to start working on a new project? Like, basically, what is the structure of your pipeline? looks like okay so whenever i start anything the first thing like let's say i have i i get got a task for like a money shot a keyframe right the first thing that i do is i do lots of research like a lot like cop- copious amount of research and like <clears throat> i would sometimes spend like three hours two hours you know just doing research of the subject to make sure that I know. And most of all, I want to immerse myself into the topic, right? So that because because I, I'm not a very structured person in comes with, when it comes to pipeline, I'm more I'm more improv- 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 improvisational, right? I don't have a method. So the the only thing that's constant is I will always immerse myself in the work so that and the brief, of course, and the reference, so that when I do the job, I can do it instinctively. So, if you if you're asking what's the pipeline, I don't think I have one pipeline. I have several that I that will that I would go depending on what's emergent, you know. So, <clears throat> let's say sometimes I start from sketches, right? Sometimes I just go straight to Blender. Sometimes I even, you know. Start with start really really. Like I sometimes would sculpt stuff in ZBrush for design, but sometimes I would do some demodeling. Like it's just depending on what I think would be best for that for that you know for that particular project. But if you're asking me for a general pipeline, that would be it. Like I would research a lot and then immerse myself in it with a lot of things with with the brief, and I just do it. You know, and. With Blender, though, um, I find that keeping your file tidy is a good is a good thing because those small mistakes that you do would mount up into a big mistake, with will later make your file unworkable. So that's also the thing I really pay attention to. Like, I'm 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 currently faster modeling than drawing, so. For designs, like I would rarely, except I think the only time I would draw is for creature design and character design. But for any other design, I would just model it. Hmm. All right. Now, speaking of Blender, that like one of the things that actually caught my eyes recently, you know, was some of your posts, you know, that you've been doing the stuff you've been doing with Blender, like you know, there's mm-hmm. the Blender add-on I think you made with ChatGPT, if I'm not mistaken, oh, yeah. and like you know, yeah. there's also the Blender drone. The drone scans you did, and you know, makes it with you mm-hmm. know in your Blender mm-hmm. project. Like, tell me, tell me a little bit about those stuff, you know, because that was like really super cool stuff, to be honest. Yeah, on the on the Chat GPT one, that's just a funny meme that I did, but the, the add-on actually works, and Chat GPT actually really made that. It's just not the real prompt. If you see, like, make me an add-on, please. That that's just the prompt. You know, I had to debug it a few times, you know, to ask Chat GPT. Like, I got a code, and then. It shows a bug, and then I input it back to ChatGPT to have it debug it, like with GPT four, I think. So that that's basically how what the process is, and it turns into an add on. So it's just that for the drone, I actually scanned that a few months ago. You know, well, not a few months, almost a year, I would say that. But I never really get to use that data, right? And I think the 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 uh, the drone I bought like several months before that also so you know I even got the drone way before that and the goal was actually I wanted to like I'm doing a short film right now my second short film like my first short film is already out it's called Revenge on YouTube the second one I really wanted to make the environment like look local you know what I mean Indonesian so I bought a drone and I tried to scan some stuff. But then I noticed that, okay, it needs a lot of work. It needs needs a lot of cleanup. And I don't think the fidelity is what I need. So so then I 
no longer use that method but they i I'll ha- but then i have all this data laying around so basically that video is just me playing with it like yes i get i got all this data it would be a shame if i don't use it so let's make a video Bas- that's basically it all right and mm-hmm. all right let me ask you something you know like you know interesting i, I always ask guests mm-hmm. um what were what are some of your you know favorite fictional mm-hmm. worlds and settings and just in general franchises you know that have inspired you mm-hmm. a lot wow so i really i actually if you if you ask me to pick a franchise I would I would say I really like Batman like to an un- unhealthy degree I really like Batman but if you're asking me you know a media like the kind of media that inspires me a lot is I really like crime drama thrillers and I really like drama films as well and you know some of my favorite films are <clears throat> her you know that's a really good film and also I really like that that film. Let me let me remember. Shit, what's that film? I really like Goodfellas, Martin Scorsese. So films like that. I think films that is more on the you know exploring what humans would do and could do, like the human side of things, human stories. You know, I don't really like stories and big. St- I I really watching them. I, I like watching them like big stories like Marvel, Star Wars, and everything, but. I watch them as enjoyment, but they don't resonate with me, right? They're really good, though. But what really resonate with me is that, you know, is those kinds of stories, those human stories, like Fallen Angels in the Mood for Love, and also films like, what's what's the title of that one? Um, but if, if an old film by Elliot Page, like Juno, I really like. And also... I th- I would say my favorite would be, oh yeah, Quentin Tarantino films. I really like also like he's a really great director. But I think what influenced me the who influenced me the most is, yeah, I think it would be him, like Quentin Tarantino and Wong Kar Wai. I really like the both directors because I grew up with East Asian cinema, right? We watch lots of Asian East Asian cinema here in Indonesia, so that's why what I really resonate with. Old Boy is really also really good. The Korean movie, 2003. That's a, that's a really good flick. Yeah, so yeah, it's those those kinds of movies, and that's why you you don't see me do a lot of like those epic things because you know, it simply I simply don't find it like resonate with me deeply. But I do them for work though. All right, and mm-hmm. um, who are some of your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most throughout your career? Throughout my career, uh, inspired me the most. I really, really like stuff by Eitan Zana. Right, inspired me a lot. I really like also, you know, the mentality like of my boss right now, Shadi Safadi. Like the the one of the reasons I wanted to work here is because I admired I, I admired the guy, and also Paul Pepera. Yeah, the late the late Paul Pepera, I also really like. I really like Moebius too. Find his art really, really, really amazing, like really distinct. And I would say another great influence is, you know who who that who that illustrator is. Oh crap! Who's who's the name? Oh, Richard Schmidt. I really, a painter, Richard Schmidt, like it, you know, influenced me a lot in my early days, like in how to paint, like his Alla Prima books, insane. And James Gurney, I also really like illustrator. Like he's weirdly like way ahead of him. Like, it, you know, what, what's interesting about James Gurney is it teach, he teaches you that the amount of effort that you put into your art will output, you know, the same amount. Like it's, your art sometimes, sometimes, you know, the thing is, some, when you make art, sometimes it's not about how good you are, right? Sometimes it's just a difference of how many effort you put in. And James Gurney is not someone who you would describe as lazy. He's far from that, you know? 
when he needs a reference, he will build a sculpture. He will light that sculpture and he would paint that sculpture. So I think it really teaches me about giving your all into into creating something beautiful. So that's why he influenced me a lot in that way of thinking. Even though, you know, his art doesn't, you know, my art doesn't really look like him. You don't see many influence of him, but in that way of thinking and his books, Color and Light, really influenced me a lot. All right. And mm-hmm. this is something, a question I think a lot of people really know and enjoy listening to, which is any advice and tips for a good portfolio and resume for artists? Let's say you want to, you know, apply it to in a studio, you know, what, sh- what should, you know, um, like, you know, mm. concept artists, you know, for example, look, look for when, you know, making their portfolio and resume. What are some important tips? I see. You I think uh, having a really good one or two really good image would al- always help. But I would say, you know, what's what's going to really help you is having a portfolio that shows that what you can actually do besides the school image. Right. Because if you open artstation.com nowadays, like everybody and their grandma can make cool image. Like there's assets everywhere. There's add-ons, you know, everybody and their grandma can make a great image. But sometimes in a lot of, in a lot of people like me included, the cracks in your skill set will show up when you have, when you're tasked, because the thing is, right. When you work as a concept artist, you know, it doesn't mean that you do those beautiful images every day. No, like most of the job is just doing designs, prop designs, doing fixing stuff and then, you know, helping the 3D artist to, you know, describe the space and stuff like that. So you've got to be ready for that. And to show that skill set, that design sense, you know, maybe you have some, maybe you have a keyframe and then you... In that keyframe, there's a car, there's a guy, and you, you have design for them. It shows how you think, right? So I think besides having a really strong artistic skill, you've got to show that also. You've got to show you can think, you can solve this problem, right? And how do you do that? It's by having, it's by showing, showcasing your design process. You know, how do you come up with this? What's the reference, right? I think if, if even... Something as little as designing your own character and vehicle would, would, you know, would make you stand out. Like, at least for me, you know, because I feel like you can, I think making, making a good image is easy, but you can really judge an artist by how good they can design something. I think that's a better parameter of judging, you know. You know in, in context of this industry, right? Of, of course, it's not for painting or anything. Oh, yeah, definitely. Then another thing that I think is really important that gets really overlooked, for example, if you're making it like a portfolio on our station, the, mm-hmm. the first thumbnail should be the actual the money shot. Then after that, you know, it's also important how you prioritize, you know, the post, your workflow, like basically your, how you pr- prioritize posting the process of your, you know, this, that same yeah. board, you know, when you scroll down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's a, that's another whole story. But like these are like some new meta things that's been, you know, that I, that I think they're kind of new in the past couple of years because mm-hmm. mostly I think portfolios were like, even before our session, people would just, you know, have their portfolios in a PDF file, you know, usually a compilation of their works and processes kind yeah. of like that, you know? Mm-hmm. So do you, do you have anything to add on that? No, I don't have anything to add. I would, I would say, you know, that would be the best to, you know, look for look for clients. I think it's to show the way how you think. But I would add too, though, that you know. That being said, I don't think you should feel like you have to do a certain thing, you know, that you don't like. So if you don't like that, then don't do that. You know, don't feel like you have to unless unless you feel like you have to, then do it. But if you if you don't feel strongly about it, I would say the the energy is better put into what you like. Because, you know, in the end of the day, if you got hired for the stuff that you don't like, then you're going to be miserable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And uh, all right, this is an interesting question. Um, mm-hmm. What area beside the area you're working in right now, which is, of course, and it's related to art and design and all yeah. that fun stuff, uh, would you be interested to explore and learn in the future? Like, basically, what other ambitions you have aside from art? Like, you know, it could be, you know, maybe mm. something you want to do in life or maybe learn something new, but just 
anything art related going on. Okay, so I work as a concept artist and art director, but on the side, I've been directing films, my own short films. So that that's a really big passion of mine because <clears throat> I think the, the stuff that I love more than art itself is would be out watching films. I really wa- like watching films, right? And making them is even better. So I think that that would be my what would you say passion and you know art is just a job for me nowadays like i don't mean to oh, it's just art is just job no i still love it but you know i i i have learned to like throughout my career like i have learned to separate it from my life you know what i mean and i i think that's the healthiest way to approach it because when your job is all your life then i don't think that's healthy but when you can separate between your job and what your passion is really is I think it's a healthier. Right? Anyway, so making films, I really like. I again, I direct directed my first one. It's out. I'm doing my second one. It's called The Undertow, and yeah, I'll, hopefully it's come. It comes up next year ish, but it's gonna be a long, long journey. This one, this one's bigger, but films and you know stuff that's unrelated to art. I really like working out. So you know, I work out a lot, and then. I also is trying to build a general store, right? So I, I have a house. I just bought a house, right? I bought a house and we have some space on the side, like a big, not a big, like a, a, a kind of empty plot of land, you know? And there's a building there and I'm tearing down the building to build a store there. So I don't know. I just, because and when I was little, my dad has this general store and I feel like I like to do the same thing. All right. Yeah. And well, we've reached a final question yeah. and section of the podcast, which is called Time yeah. Capsule. I think you can kind of guess what it's about, but let me explain mm-hmm. it in, in this way, which is, I think, the best way that everyone can understand what I mean. Imagine mm-hmm. you're in the escape pod of a shuttle and you're about to be sent into the deep abyss of the space and be lost forever, uh-huh. right? Like uh-huh. there's a countdown going on, you know, for a couple of minutes. And at that time, you know, you have uh, like, you know, a couple of, you know, wo- like recording, you know, devices, you know, you can leave some voice logs, you know, maybe. And in that case, what would you record? You know, like basically if you could say anything from yourself mm. and a human being to another human being, and that's another human being is anyone who's going to listen to this podcast at any point of time in the future, what would you say? Oh, yeah, that's a hard one. I would say, I would say, don't put your egg in one basket. Don't put all your happiness towards one thing. You know, always, 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 you know, have something else. Like, don't love something, sure, but don't marinate yourself in it. Right? What I mean is, if you love art, then. Don't make it your whole life. Art is important for life, but what's most important than art itself is life itself. So, you know, there there's a whole world to live it out there. And if you just do this one thing, then it's gonna be you know it's 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 a shame because you don't get to see other thing and you get you sacrificed a lot for this little thing that. In the, in the whole scheme of things, it's not really important. And that doesn't have to be art. That can be anything. So, you know, care about people, right? And nothing is too important to neglect life, I think. Yeah, absolutely agree. Yeah. And yeah, that's such a, actually a really interesting point because sometimes, you know, I even think about this myself. I know I'm like, you know, all right, you know, I'm trying to become an environment artist, intriguing environment mm-hmm. artist, and you know, but at mm-hmm. the same time, I'm also thinking about other things I, I want to do. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, because, like, all right, like that's basically everyone's main objective in this world is to you know pick it, pick something, get good at it, make money, get mm-hmm. get a stable mm-hmm. financially, get a house, you know, yeah, yeah. They pay off your mortgages and all that stuff, you know. But for most people, they tend to forget what's like. That's not the whole purpose of life. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. That's hundred percent something we all are striving to, you know, just um, do. But at the same time, it's really great that during this whole process to be mindful of, you know, of how are we, you know, going through this journey, you know, and what are we mm-hmm. missing, you know, how much yes. are we? Like, for example, if there's a, like a chance, you know, maybe 
take a, like a quick two, three day vacation outside your city, you know, but instead you choose, you know, work a little bit extra harder. I mean, I get it sometimes yeah. it's necessary, but yeah, if you're, if you're, really, if you're really mindful, you know, sometimes maybe, you know, take that vacation, you know, see a new place, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah. Because, uh, what, what was I going to say? Yeah, because it sometimes can become an addiction. I can, you know, we all know addictions are ain't that ain't ain't good. And I watched this Gumroad tutorial by Brad Rigney. I think everybody should watch that Brad Rigney. Like, it's it's a good content. But he said basically, like, you gotta find like it. You know, actually listening to his tutorial is what gives me this awareness and you know thought is. Yeah, basically, as a person, again, there's a whole world to live out there, and you gotta find something bigger than yourself, you know, than your art, to immerse yourself into. That's better. It could be your family. It could be your. It could be God for some people. It could be your local community, your partner, even your dog, right? But something, some something other than this, because it will slow swallow you. And how the, this industry is being structured right now it can swallow your life because people come and go every day you know every day there's a young artist that's 10 times better than you and ready to take your job anywhere they have a they have youth more energy than you and they're better right it's a if you think about it, it's a ruthless industry so if you put all your eggs in this basket and i and i think it's true for you know for other industries too but Again, if you put all your eggs in work, then, you know, when it breaks, then it breaks. I agree. <laughs> That's something really important. I just remember, you know, that kind of ties into what you said. Something that I really mentioned, like, why this I mentioned? Sorry, my brain is malfunctioning. <laughs> Something that I noticed <laughs> recently, that, not just uh -huh. recently, like for, like for a while, actually. Not just in art, like in a lot of things. Like you see, or you're active in a community, you get to know a lot of new people, you know, of course, you know, when you're new, for example, let's say art community and you see people of, you know, different, you know, skill levels, you know? Mm -hmm. And the thing that I notice is sometimes, you know, you like, there are, there are a certain group of people and not just in art, as I said, in everything that they've been doing, practicing that field for a long time, but there's no improvement in them. And I think one of the yeah. main things, one of the main reasons for that is there's this subconscious thing where people tie their personality into that thing. Mm -hmm. So, it kind of ties into their ego really strongly. So it's really yeah. hard for them to unlearn and become that, have that student mentality again, to always oh, yeah, learn yeah. and just, you know, improve. And anyway, they just, all right, I'm this, this, like, and their art improves a little bit. And of course, you know, yeah. their art self develops, but they stagnate completely. Yeah. And for yeah, 10 I think years. Hit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. I think you hit the nail on the head there. Yeah, and uh, it's not just by the way in art in everything. Like you know, I used to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still am, but I'm kind of. I kind of don't do it anymore. But I, but I'm. But I used to be like IELTS instructor and English teacher for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, for the longest time, and it's the same. Like there are English teachers who just don't learn. Like, English hasn't improved in five six years, and they're still the same thing. Like, yeah, nothing new. I don't by nothing new. I don't yeah. necessarily like you know. Um, with languages is different. I'm not talking about new vocabulary, but in general, you can feel mm -hmm. how someone's communication has developed in that language, you know, then yeah, yeah, yeah. their expression, you know, that's how basically mm -hmm. as a person, the best way to measure someone's ability to yeah. um, use a language is how they can express different ideas. You know, that's basically it. Yeah. It's not about vocabulary. Mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's the same with art because art is in a sense expression, you know, and mm -hmm. um, in everything, it's you know, language, the, yeah. Yeah, the, the main key thing to take away from this is to always try to catch yourself or attend it to see if you're, you know, be, becoming, you know, complacent, you know, in what you're doing. And what I mean by yeah. that is, like, you know, does it is it does it feel scary if you think I have to, like, you know, start from new in something? If that answer is yes, then you're probably yeah not improving a lot because if you uh. because if you're excited about learning, you know, you you have no problem you know getting back to becoming a student again at at the thing you know yeah, you could yeah. maybe even new things you know mm -hmm. i don't know if that makes sense because i felt like i i spoke a little bit you know no no it's, it makes total <laughs> sense makes total sense yeah yeah i i really i really I, that that's interesting the point about ego and not improving i think 
you know, I actually have an anecdote about that. I, I used to be this purist of, you know, everything needs to be created from scratch, right? Like one of those. If I have to make something, I have to draw it. But I feel like... I feel like most of that is ego too, at least for me, right? I think that's most of that is ego because I, I, if if I, if you really dig into what 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 causes that mindset is because for me, what causes that is I I have this concept of if I don't make this, then I'm not a real artist, right? If I if I cannot make this, then I cannot call myself an artist, and and I and I need to be able to make this in order for me to love this art, right? So that's that's I think that's an I don't know, but for me that's an unhealthy attachment to something. And the minute I throw all that away, is the minute I see my career like change for the better, right? So I totally agree with you. Like sometimes it's just ego. You know, that that stubborn of not being it. like because in a way it's you know it's it's also not letting yourself be a student again right because if you're stuck to this old way of doing stuff and this new way comes and you're you refuse to learn it or you don't want to learn it then in a way I think that's also not putting yourself to be in a student position mm-hmm. you know yeah definitely and yeah. well I think this that's about it. Thank you so much mm-hmm. for coming by for the podcast and oh, oh my yeah. god, why is my why is my browser not responding? All right, it fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> like I legit oh, I, I just start to have a panic attack for a second. Jesus. Oh shit. Yeah. So again, thank you so much for coming by. Where can people contact you if they had any questions? Is there an Instagram account? Yep. yep. Thanks for having me, dude. All right, my pleasure. And thanks thanks to anyone who tuned in and listened to this episode or watched on YouTube. As always, mm-hmm. you know, leave, the, leave any suggestions or comments you have down below in the comment section or you can send it to me on DMs on Instagram. I'll always check them out. And with that being said, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Till next episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.